دكتور مارك فيركلر هو مؤسس جامعة القيادة المسيحية وهو مشهور بتعليمه الثوري عن كيفية الاستماع إلى صوت الله منذ عام 1972 وهو يعلم جسد المسيح في ستة قارات عن كيفية الحياة نتيجة لعلاقة حميمية مع الروح القدس يعلن الكتاب المقدس أن الله يرشدنا بواسطة الأحلام هذه المحاضرات عنوانها اسمع صوت الله من خلال أحلامك وفيها يشرح مارك أهمية الأحلام في الكتاب المقدس ويعطينا مبادئ لكي نميز بدقة ما الذي يريد الله أن يقوله لنا المحاضرة الخامسة بعنوان مبادئ تفسير الأحلام الجزء الرابع We want to welcome you back to this next session on Christian dream interpretation. برحب بكم في محاضرة جديدة من الترجمة المسيحية للأحلام. Dreams are amazingly creative within us. الأحلام شيء خلاق جدا بداخلنا. And they will tell you stories using pictures. بيقول لك قصص مستخدما صور. Just like when Jesus preached, it says without without a parable, he taught them not. وزي ما يسوع كان بيوعز كان دايما يكلمهم بأمثال. So he's always drawing little stories and pictures to let you see spiritual truths. ودايما كان وهو بيحكي القصة بيرسم كده صورة ومثل عشان يقدم فيها الحق الكتابي. And our hearts do that within us. وقلوبنا بتعمل كده معنا. It will draw little pictures trying to get you to understand spiritual truths. بيرسم صورة علشان نقدر نفهم بيها الحق المقصود. So how about if you have a picture of some food that comes into your hand but you cannot eat it? إيه رأيك لو أنت عندك صورة لبعض المأكولات اللي جت في إيدك وأنت مش قادر تأكلها؟ Well, that's a picture and a saying that you have in your culture. ده الصورة للي بيحصل في الثقافة بتاعتك. And so I want to ask, how am I experiencing that in my own life right now? وأسأل سؤال يا ترى إزاي أقدر أختبر ده في حياتي؟ What has the Lord placed into my hands, but for some reason I'm not able to partake of it and enjoy it? إيه الحاجة اللي ربنا عطاها وحطها في إيديا وأنا مش قادر أستمتع بيها ومش قادر أكلها؟ Maybe he's given me some gift or some blessing, and and I'm just for some reason not enjoying it. ممكن يكون عطاني مواهب أو بركات لكن لسبب ما أنا مش أدرى استمتع بيها. Maybe he's given us great identity because we know now who we are in Christ Jesus. وممكن يكون عطاني هوية جديدة لأن الآن أنا أعرف مين أنا في المسيح. We're chosen. We're beloved. We're special in His sight. إحنا مختارين. إحنا محبوبين. إحنا غاليين في عني. And He seated us with Him to rule and reign. وهو أجلسنا معه في السماويات لنحكم ونملك. Well, that's a gift in my hands. دي عطية في إيدي. Maybe I'm not eating it. ممكن أنا مش أدرى كلها. مش أدرى استمتع بيها. Maybe I'm saying, no, God, I I don't think I'm that good or that powerful or that able. أو أنا دائما أقول أنا مستحقش. أنا مش قوي كفاية. أنا لا لا أستطيع. And so I want to go to God and I want to pray and say, Lord, what does this symbol mean to me? ولازم أروح لله وأقول رب الأمر ده بيرمز لإيه في حياتي. What have you placed in my hands and I'm not partaking of it? إيه رب اللي أنت حطيته في إيدي وأنا مش قادر أستعمله أو أستخدمه أو أستمتع به. And there's lots of different sayings like that. وفي أمور كتيرة زي كذا. One of the sayings that we have is playing with fire. عندنا كذا بعض المقولات اللي بنقولها زي ما تلعبش بالنار. So if that kind of an image showed up in my dream that I was playing with fire, ولو المقولة دي ظهرت في صورة في حلمي إن أنا بلعب بالنار, I want to, I would want to pray and say, God, where in my life am I playing with something really dangerous and I should back away? يا رب إيه المنطقة اللي في حياتي اللي أنا بلعب بحاجة خطيرة جدا وأنا مش واخد بالي وممكن فعلا تضيعني. Now your dreams will use these kinds of pictures all the time. وأحلامك بتستخدم صور زي كده كل الوقت. 
So, so try to relax and put a smile on your face and say, what could this picture mean? And don't be a literalist, but realize, hey, it's symbolic. And bounce around with your family members and your friends. Hey, what might this symbol mean? So we want to learn to think symbolically and not just think literally. Another thing that happens is God will actually give us a creative solution to a difficult problem. He'll give it to us in a dream. There was a scientist who was peering through his microscope trying to discover the shape of a benzene molecule. And he couldn't, he couldn't figure it out. He goes to sleep at night and he has a dream. And there are dogs that are in a circle and uh, they have the tail of the dog in front of them in their mouth. And they're running in the circle. And so he gets up in the morning and he says this. He said, I wonder if the benzene molecule is circular. So he, he went to his laboratory, peered through his microscope, and was able to prove it was circular. So God gives us revelation and creativity in our dreams. Allah Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, I ask for divine creativity in my dreams. I believe you want to make me creative. And I, can, I believe you can give me creativity in my dream. I'm asking you for it. And I receive it from you as a gift. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. According to our faith, be it unto us. So when I go to sleep at night, I pray and ask God for dreams and revelation to solve the problems I'm working on. يحل المشكلة اللي أنا بشتغل عليها. And if you'll ask for that, you'll find up, you'll, you'll wake in the, up, in the, up in the morning with dreams and with creativity and with revelation. ولو أنت طلبت ده هتصحى الصبح بحلم مليان بالإبداع ومليان إنك تكون خلاق وتقدر تحل المشكلة اللي أنت عايزها. The man who developed the sewing machine. He couldn't figure out how to thread the thread into the needle and where it should go. And the solution of that came to him in a dream at night. The man who built giant earth moving equipment to build our super highways. Sometimes he couldn't figure out what the next piece should look like in, 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 his, in his equipment. And in a worship service, God would drop a picture and a vision into his mind as to what the next piece should look like. 
الجهاز اللي المفروض يكون الوقت الجاي and he would go home and he would create it and weld it up and put it into his equipment ورجع البيت وصممه وحط جزء من ادواته so god wants to give us creativity in every area of life not just quote spiritual things الله عايز يدينا ابداع في كل منطقه من مناطق حياتنا مش بس في الامور الروحيه Because in his worldview, there's no sacred secular split. He said the entire earth is mine. عشان في العالم بتاعه ما عندوش جزء عالمي وجزء روحي هو كل الأرض هي ملك لي. And so I'm glad to get revelation and creativity in whatever project I'm working at through the day. وأنا ببقى سعيد إن أخد إعلان وإبداع في كل مشروع أنا بشتغل عليه في حياتي. Whether it's farming, whether it's healthcare, whether it's investing in the markets, God can give revelation in every area. سواء في مجال الزراعة أو مجال الصحة أو مجال استثمار الأموال، الله يستطيع أن يعطي إبداع في كل منطقة من مناطق حياتنا. Now, if you have several dreams in the, in the same night, لو كان عندك أكثر من حلم في ليلة واحدة. They're probably all working on the same issue and they're giving you possible solutions to the issue you're, con- you're concerned about. غالباً هم بيكونوا في نفس الخط بيدوك نفس الحل لنفس المشكلة اللي أنت بتفكر فيها. And so it's given you a chance to look at different scenarios and see which one is going to work out best. وبيعطيك أكتر من سيناريو عشان أنت تقدر تشتغل في أفضل سيناريو بالنسبة لك. And most generally, the final dream of the night is going to show you the best solution and the one that you're going to want to go with. آخر حلم أنت بتحلمه في الليل بتكون ده أفضل حل للمشكلة اللي أنت بتفكر فيها. Another principle for dream interpretation would be this. ومبدأ تاني في ترجمة الأحلام هو the most natural interpretation to my dream. Is most likely the correct one. التفسير الأصح هو أكتر تفسير طبيعي للحلم غالبا ما بيكون هو ده أصح تفسير. So go with your natural and most simplest interpretation for the dream. عشان كده اتحرك لأبسط وأكتر تفسير طبيعي للحلم بتاعك. And try to stick with what the images of the dream are actually saying. وحاول ترتبط بالصورة اللي بيرسمها الحلم وإيه اللي هي عايزة تقوله. If the image is saying I'm trying to turn my car off and it won't turn off. ولو الصورة بتقول إن أنا بحاول أطفي السيارة بتاعتي وهي مش راضية تطفي. Then I want to stick with the theme of hey, what am I trying to turn off in my life? That won't turn off. حاول أمشي مع الفكرة بتاعت إيه اللي أنا بحاول أطفي وهو مش عايز يطفي. I don't want to go off and say, "Hey, God's going to buy me a new car." مش هروح مع الفكرة اللي الله عايز يشتري لي عربية جديدة. Because the dream doesn't have an image of you buying anything. لأن الحلم فوش أي صورة إن أنا بشتري أي شيء. So stick with what the image actually says. عشان كده خليك مرتبط بالصورة اللي الحلم بيرسمها. And if you go beyond it and start saying other stuff, then it's likely to get kind of weird on you. ولو أنت رحت أبعد من الصورة دي وابتديت تتخيل أمور تانية، غالبا هيكون عندك تفسير غريب ملوش علاقة بالحلم. And we really don't want this to get crazy. We want to keep it simple and down to earth. إحنا مش عايزين الأمر يبقى مجنون جدا. إحنا عايزين يبقى في أبسط صورة وأكثر واقعية. Okay, so are there warnings in the Bible saying we need to be careful of our dreams and we need to not listen to our dreams? هل في حاجة في الكتاب بتقول إن إحنا مفروض نكون حرسين مع أحلامنا وإن إحنا ما نسمعش الأحلامنا? Does the Bible actually say that you and I should be cautious and not listen to all of our dreams. هل الكتاب بيعلمنا ان احنا نبقى حريصين جدا وان احنا ما نسمعش لكل احلامنا؟ I'd like you to go in your Bible to Jeremiah 23 
عايزك تروح في كتابك المقدس لسفر أرمية أصحاح 23 وعدد 25 Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 25 through 27. This is one of several warnings in the Bible cautioning us about dreams. So let's see what it actually says. Let's see what it actually says. Jeremiah 23 25. Jeremiah 23 25. I have heard I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsely in my name saying I had a dream I had a dream قد سمعت ما قالته الانبياء الذين تنبؤوا باسمي بالكذب قائلين حلمت حلمت How long is there anything in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy falsehood even these prophets of deception they're prophesying a deception of their own heart. حتى متى يوجد في قلب الأنبياء المتنبئين بالكذب بل هم أنبياء خداع قلبهم. And they intend to make my people forget my name by their dreams which they relate to one another. الذين يفكرون أن ينسوا شعبي اسمي بأحلامهم التي يقصونها الرجل على صاحبه. All right, now my question to you is this. سؤالي هنا هو الآتي. Is, is the Bible cautioning you about listening to your dreams? هل الكتاب هنا بيحذرك إنك تسمع لحلمك? Do these verses say you need to be careful and not listen to your dreams? هل الشواهد دي بتقول إنك تبقى حريص وإنك ما تستمعش للحلم بتاعك? They don't say that. هم ما بيقولوش كده. They say you need to be careful about listening to dreams that come from other people. لكن بيقول لك أنت لازم تبقى حريص للأحلام اللي جاية من أشخاص آخرين. It's people who come and tell you their dreams and they try to lead you astray. الأشخاص اللي بيجي يقولوا لك أحلامهم عشان يقودوك في خداع. So this is not a warning about you and I listening to our dreams. ده مش تحذير ليا وليك إن إحنا نستمع لأحلامنا. It's saying don't listen to other people's dreams who try to lead you astray. لكن هنا بيقول إنك ما تستمعش للأشخاص اللي بيحاولوا يقودوا حياتك في في خداع. All right, let's take a look at Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 5. بص معايا على سفر التسنية أصحاح 13 من عدد واحد لخمسة. Now these are just two of many passages that all say the same thing. So we're going to just look these two up and you can know the rest of them say the same thing. Deuteronomy 13 verse 1 says, if a prophet or a dreamer of dream arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder comes true concerning what he spoke to you, saying, "Let's go after other gods whom you've not known and let's serve them." إذا قام في وسطك نبي أو حالم حلما وعطاك آية أو أعجوبة ولو حدثت الآية أو الأعجوبة التي كلمك عنها قائلا لنذهب وراء آلهة أخرى لم نعرفها ونعبدها. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. فلا تسمع لكلام ذلك النبي أو الحالم ذلك الحلم. For the Lord your God is testing you to find out if you love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. لأن رب إلهكم يمتحنكم لكي يعلم هل تحبون الرب إلهكم من كل قلوبكم ومن كل أنفسكم. All right, so is this a warning saying, don't listen to your dreams? هل التحذير ده بيقول لك ما تستمعش لحلمك? It's not. لا. It's a warning saying, don't listen to other people's dreams who come and tell you their dreams and try to lead you away from God. لكن بيقول لك ما تستمعش للأشخاص اللي بيجوا يقولوا لك حلمهم ويحاولوا يقودوك بحلمهم بعيدا عن الله. 
Now, there's only one warning in the entire Bible concerning you listening to your dreams. هناك تحذير واحد في كل الكتاب المقدس من أن تستمع إلى حلمك. Let's turn and look at it. خلينا نبص ليه. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 3 and 7. سفر الجامعة أصحاح خمسة من عدد ثلاثة لسبعة. This is the only warning in the entire Bible cautioning you about your dreams. ده التحذير الوحيد في كل الكتاب المقدس اللي بيحذرك من حلمك. Verse 3 for the dream comes through much effort and the voice of the fool through many words. لأن الحلم يأتي من كثرة الشغل وقول الجهل من كثرة الكلام. Verse 7, for in many dreams and in many words there's empty and emptiness, rather fear God. أن ذلك من كثرة الأحلام والأباطيل وكثرة الكلام ولكن إخشى الله. All right, so we've got a Bible with 50 dreams in it, and God says over and over, I speak to the dream. وعندنا كتاب مليان بالأقل 50 حلم والله بيقول إن أنا بتكلم ليك من خلال الأحلام. And all 50 dreams are examples of God speaking to the dream. And we have one verse that says that many dreams there's foolishness. So when I have lots of verses that say one thing, and I have one verse that contradicts all of those verses. وعندي شاهد واحد بيتعارض مع بقية الشواهد. I want to pray about that one verse to see if I can understand what he's really saying. أنا محتاج أصلي علشان الشاهد ده عشان أفهم إيه اللي مقصود منه بالضبط. And I'm going to give you two possibilities as to what might be going on here. وأنا عايز أديكوا احتمالين لإيه المقصود من الشاهد ده. Maybe Solomon's talking about daydreams as opposed to dreams at night. وممكن يكون سليمان هنا بيتكلم عن أحلام اليقظة كنوع من الأحلام في الوقت ده. Any other possibility would be this. واحتمال آخر هو الأيش. When Solomon writes the book of Ecclesiastes, he's questioning a lot of things in his own life. ولما كتب سليمان سفر الجامعة كان بيتساءل عن كل حاجة في الحياة. He's depressed and he's trying to find meaning, he's trying to find purpose, and he's trying lots of different avenues. وهو كان مكتئب وبيحاول يلاقي معنى وطرق يفهم بها الحياة. He wants to see if he can find purpose in building projects and purpose in women and purpose in crops and all of these fail him. وكان بيحاول يلاقي سبب لأنه يصنع مشاريع أو سبب يكون عنده نساء أو سبب أنه يزرع محصول وكل ده خانه. So he's kind of exploring as he goes through this book. وكان نوع من الاكتشاف في حياته. We ought to read chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. ولو أرينا أصحاح الأول عدد واحد واثنين. The words of the preacher, the son of David, the king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. كلام الجامعة ابن داود الملك في أرشاليم باطل الأباطيل قال الجامعة باطل الأباطيل الكل باطل. Will you tell me, is that a true statement? هل دي عبارة حقيقية? Is everything vanity? هل كل شيء باطل? He says everything's vanity. هو قال الكل باطل. I said that's not true. وده مش حقيقة. There's a divine purpose and a divine destiny in everything. هناك السبب إلهي وقطة إلهية في كل شيء. So that statement is is wrong. عشان كده العبارة دي مش مزبوطة. Because he's actually trying to discover truth. هو بيحاول يدور على الحق. And so he's saying some things that aren't actually true. وأي الحاجات كتير مش حقيقة. And by the time he gets to chapter twelve, he comes to the truth. وللوقت اللي جي فيه في أصحاح اتناشر هو وجد الحق.
He said the truth is, fear God, keep his commandments. Now I accept that as being true. But some of the earlier things he's saying are definitely wrong. So it's possible in my book that that when he talks about dreams, he may be wrong. Because all the rest of the Bible says we can trust dreams. So how about if we just confess some things together? How about if you say this with me? God, you have said that in the last days you will pour out your spirit. You have said young men will dream dreams and old men will receive visions. You have said that you speak through the dream. You've said you give me counsel at night through my dream. And you've said you're trying to get me to repent so I can stay on the path of life. And so, Lord, from this day on, I will honor dream. I will look for your voice to me in the dream. I will look to, for your counsel to me in the dream. And I will pray about my dream. And I'll ask for revelation. And I'll share my dreams with my family. And I'll share my dreams with my spiritual friends. And I will learn to hear your voice through the dream. Lord, that is the purpose of my heart. That is the desire of my heart. I choose that path. I choose to become an expert in interpreting dreams. And I will pursue that path until it's a reality in my life. And so, Father, I thank you for the gift of dreams. I love and I worship you. The true and the living God who lives in my heart who speaks to me nightly. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So as we leave this series, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to work with your dreams and share them in a group setting and get more and more skilled at interpreting dreams. When I taught this course back in my hometown, which is Buffalo, New York, we taught it as a 12-week course. And every week we interpreted one or two dreams as a group. At the end of the 12 weeks, a student said, we don't feel secure that we know how to interpret dreams well yet. They said, could we do a practicum and just get together for 12 more weeks and just work on two or three dreams every night? And so we did that. 
And once we would interpret a person's dream, it would take maybe 30 minutes or so. A lot of times it would show a need in a person's heart and we'd say, would you like prayer? And they would usually say yes, and so we would pray for them and minister God's grace to them. So it became a time of divine healing and impartation into people's lives. And I love that because I believe that's what Christianity is all about. And so I'm going to encourage you, don't rush away from this series. Get together until the people in your group feel, I got it, I know how to interpret dreams. If you want to watch the series a second time, you surely can do that. Or if you just want to practice dream interpretation, three or four dreams a night, do that. But I've learned not to rush on to new things until I've mastered what God was teaching me. So I'm asking you, will you stay with this until you master the skill of dream interpretation? And then we'll move on to the next thing God wants to teach us. So that's my challenge to you. I think it's because that's God's challenge to me. He says, Mark, stay with it until you own it, till it's part of who you are. All right, well, God bless you as you work with interpreting your dreams. Amen. 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 The Bible says that God counsels us at night through our dreams. So we have Rajiv here with us. And Rajiv, you have a dream. Rajiv, Yes. Can can you tell us your dream? Yes. Okay. This time I had a dream. I and my father was there was a building like church. We were top of the roof. So my father took out a like made a hole. And he told me to go first inside the building. So, so I told him no. First you go, then I will come. Then he went inside the building. So he had a he had a seat. He he made a seat for himself to sit there. Then, then I I went inside. When I was going, I was not having any grip. Suddenly I fell down. But I was not on the floor, I was like falling down. Mm -hmm. Suddenly a grip, like there was a wall made for, like I made made grip there. Then, then I slowly came down. Then I saw four people who were Chinese. And 
by seeing them لما شفتوهم I sat on the floor down أنا قعدت في الأرض I started praying وابتديت أصلي One of the Chinese were wearing black cloth وواحد من الصينيين دول كان لابس عباءة سوداء What he did, he just took his clone. هو خد الرداء بتاعه ده. He was putting on me. وحطه عليا. Suddenly, it came, it came, went back to himself. بعد كده رجع لنفسه. Then that place, after that, the place, that place was like a big feast. They was having a big feast going there. وتحول المكان ده لمكان في عيد كبير. And I saw that four people. وشوفت الأربع أشخاص دول. As a servant. And in that feast, there was big bread, chickens. وفي العيد ده كان في خبز ودجاج. Alright. Alright. Was it a free feast, or people were paying, or just? No, it was a free feast. Free. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's that's quite a dream. <laughs> so what would you say was the key emotions that you felt in that dream? I got four Chinese people as a servant mm-hmm. and I think I was praying for them. Okay. Okay, so what what was the key action of the dream? Uh, you were falling. Yeah, I was falling, and God made a grip for me. Yeah. Like he was, he said, he told, gave a encouragement to me, like don't don't be afraid. Okay. And when you are in trouble, I will be there. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So, in your life, what what do you think this dream is talking about in in your life? حياتك الحلم ده بيتكلم عن إيه؟ The my I interpret like my father was a god for me. Okay. وأنا بترجمها إن أبي أبويا كان زي الله الآب بالنسبة لي. And when I was falling down. وأنا كنت بقع. He made a grip for me. هو عطاني حاجة أمسك فيها. And after that he he helped me to make that four people who was attack who were attacking me as as a servant. وهو جعل الأربع أشخاص اللي كانوا هيهجموا عليا. زي خدم ليا and I had a big great feast mm-hmm. وبعد كده كان عندي فرح وعيد كبير so the great feast <laughs> I mean God has spread a table before us and he's given us a feast الله بيرتب مائدة قدامنا وبيعد لنا are we talking about that feast and just sharing that feast with the world yeah وعايزنا نشارك الفرح والعيد ده مع العالم yeah. Yeah, and it was a free feast. Yeah, it was. وكان شيء مجاني. So salvation is a free gift. لأن الخلاص هو عطية مجانية. Mhm. Yeah. And the people who were attacking you were trying to throw some darkness over you. والأشخاص اللي كانوا بيهاجموك كانوا بيحاولوا يرموا شيء أسود عليك. A dark, a cloak, a dark cloak. Yeah, dark cloak. رداء أو عباءة سوداء. But it didn't stick. Yes. لكن ما لزقتش فيك. Nobody can throw a curse over you. Yes. It's not, it's not going to stick. <laughs> yes. Because you're protected by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And that first building you were climbing, was that a church? Like it was middle, it was like a church and it was having a big clock outside. Mm-hmm. So the big clock might symbolize what? Uh, so it symbolizes like, like be prepared. Mm-hmm. It's a time to get prepared. Okay. That God might come and we should be prepared to get. Okay. All right. To shir lewaat al adad istaid lanu gil lewaat nakt kun mustaid.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that the top of that building was shaped like like the ch- a church or a temple on the top of it. Yes. So are you climbing with God up up to a position of ministry? Yeah, I think. You are. Yeah. And as you climb towards this place of ministry, to this this work in the church. Um, Let's see. You you lo- you lose your grip. أنت بتفقد المكان اللي بتمسك فيه. Have you felt that? Have you felt it as you, you know, are pursuing the ministry that uh, that that you had that you lose your grip at, at this before you had this dream? Did you feel in some way you were losing your grip? هل حسيت ده في حياتك الخاصة إنك وأنت بت تكمل ورا الرب انك بتفقد المكان الحاجه اللي انت ماسك فيها maybe your faith is being attacked or whatever i don't know او ايمانك يكون بيهجم عليه هل ده انت حسيته yes sometimes in like in when we are like going somewhere and sometimes it happens i used to get depressed and know how can i so, so many times god showed like don't be is courage so i was just then i yes be courage in him only نعم ده حصل في حياتي اكتر مره احس ان انا محبط والرب يقول لي ما تكتئبش وما تتشجع وما تبقاش محبط okay so the dream is saying that you're climbing together with god into a place of ministry والحلم بيقول انك انت بتصعد مع الله لمكان خاص في الخدمه and something causes you to lose your grip maybe you lose faith and get depressed وحاجك بتسبب انك تفقد ايمانك او تفقد المكان اللي انت ماسك فيه وبتبقى مكتئب but even when you're depressed and you're spiraling downward god reaches out and grabs you and pulls you back وحتى في الوقت اللي انت بتقع فيه الله بيتمسك بيك وبيرجعك وينقذك so he doesn't allow you to hurt yourself يسمح لك انك تجرح نفسك he lowers you to the ground gently <laughs> and when people try to attack you and throw a curse on you, he doesn't allow it to alight. And those people who are attacking you are eventually going to be part of the kingdom of God. They're going to get sir- saved. And they're going to help serve a feast to the rest of humanity. How's that feel? How's that feel? Feels good. Does your, does your heart say yes? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> when we have the right interpretation of a dream, your heart leaps and says, aha, that's it. Does your heart feel that aha moment? <laughs> it feels wow. It feels wow, huh? Wow is good. <laughs> so, so Father, Lord, we just thank you that you do counsel us at night through our dreams. And and Father, we thank you for the counsel that you've given to Rajiv in this dream. And I just pray for his, strength, his faith to be strengthened. I just pray for an impartation of faith into his heart. That all that he is believing you for will happen. Lord, you will take him to the top of the mountain. And those who attack him will be defeated. And they will become part of the kingdom of God. So, Father, establish that in faith in his heart. And we just break off doubt and unbelief. And we command it to leave him in Jesus' name. Rajiv is a child of faith. He is a man of faith. So faith arise in his heart. In Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 Praise God. Magdal Rob. Good dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right.